I believe we are live. Wow, Andrea, you know what? I brought you right up on the screen right away. I just trusted that this was actually the way it was supposed to be. Your light is so incredibly amazing. Um, first and foremost, I don't even really believe that you need much of an introduction just in, in, in your energy, your presence today. And I wanna thank you for being with us in Master Your Thinking and to share with, with us your experience, who you are, what your mission is while you're here, how it is in which that you discovered this universal truth. Ladies and gentlemen, I wanna welcome Andrea Waters King with us today. Um, again, such an honor to have you here. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. Well, thank you for having me here. It's, it's such a, an honor and a pleasure to be here with you as someone who's become very rapidly a, 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 a close friend and confidant. So I'm honored to be here and I'm honored to be in the presence of all that are, are joining us. Thank you. And I also wanna remind the audience too that you know, both Andrea and I are also going with the flow. We're going to, we're really just going to plug into that higher power and allow what's meant to be shared with all of you today to just really flow. We have a little bit of an outline, but otherwise we just want to be authentic and transparent. Andrea, I've shared with everyone a little bit about how we've met, but not in much detail. As a matter of fact, I don't know if you know this, but you were a surprise guest. Um, I shared with everyone the power of manifestation and how that how in which that when you're holding a certain vision that those things can absolutely come true. And you are that validation for many that are here that are striving for a dream that they cannot see. So um, again, thank you so much for making this real for, for not just me, but many of the people that also study this material. Again, the, the universal truth, the word that ultimately goes back to a higher power who we call God, some might call source consciousness. There's many different names for that. So I kind of want to also share, um, I think that if, you, if that's okay, again, going with the flow of how we kind of met, and then I'd love for the audience to get to know you. Um, that validation again for everyone here, it was by complete divine divine timing for us to meet. And I, if you could kind of share with everyone what that looked like for you and how we connected. Well, um my husband and I were at a retreat center, Rhythmia, um, in Costa Rica. We were actually in preparation for um, something that has transpired, which was we were organizing on the day, the 58th anniversary of the I Have a Dream speech, we were organizing multiple um, marches for the protection of voting rights all across this country. So we had this idea and concept of one day, um, one voice in multiple cities. Um, it ended up being, we ended up um, manifesting 100 marches in 41 states, um, all on one day, all people just in a uh, immensely diverse coalition of people coming together to stand for, for voting rights. Um, so we were there um, just making sure that we were um, in our greatest alignment and, and being um, our greatest strength and making sure that we were as clear as possible to be taking on something um, of that nature. And most importantly, to make sure that we were walking and grounded very much in, in love. And so we were there um, for that week doing that. And you and I met, I believe, on the, the last night. Um, well, we, we were around each other before, but the last night was a night that we had the opportunity to really sit down together and, and um, be with, with one another with a small group of very powerful um, ladies, women. And one of the things that I noticed immediately, we were talking about something and, you know, and we were like, oh, I wish we had no chocolate or what. And then you said that and, you know, literally two minutes later, you know, it appeared on the table and then you said something else and, else, and, it, and it appeared on the table. And it struck me that um, we were in the midst <laughs> of a very, very powerful manifester. Um, and then as we were talking, and I think I said, said as much, and then we were talking later and something in your conversation was very familiar with, to me with the studying studies and the teachings that I know of of Neville Goddard and others, and I was asking you about that. So that began our 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 quest together. Right, 
And what I think it's, and I'm feeling this, and I hope that um, our audience feels it too. And if you guys are here live, let us know you're here. And if you're on replay, please let us know that you're on replay as well. That energy is what I want our students and our audience to feel. And that's what I felt from you. I don't know, again, if everyone knows just yet as we get closer to, you know, the, you know, you being really uh, the daughter-in-law of Martin Luther King. Uh, those are the things this there. And what I want to what I want to share with everyone about that, though, too, is there was this love that you just said. There was this that you said just now that you were leading with love. And I remember that power that I felt. It was as if I that that it was, you know, what I want to share with people is as you're transitioning and you're shifting, as we say, aligning to a new reality. I came to you because of all the different, it was that everything you're seeking is seeking you. And the language that I spoke, that universal truth, you felt that. And I felt this, this power that came through, through and through you. And when you said you are a master manifester, what I shared with others in my past webinars was it was in that moment I felt a shift within me and everything changed for me because yeah. of what you shared. And you see, when you're on the right mental frequency, you can see here and be around those that you would have never imagined. I didn't know who you were at that time, but right. And, and, and I did eventually as, as people started to talk and things, but what really made it so amazing was, wow, look at those that know this information that are leading those into the new world. Again, leading with love and light. So I think that's why I, and, and of course getting invited to DC, you showed me a beautiful world that I've never, never experienced before. Had I not gone to that retreat, which by the way, I missed my flight to oh, another yeah. story of it in itself. And I oh. almost didn't go, mm -hmm. but it was meant to meet you and all those women there. So again, I just, I want people to really feel that because now also I'd love for you to tell everyone a little bit about yourself. You know, what got you on this journey? You know, what are your passions? I just want to open it to you, Andrea. Thank you. Oh my goodness. That's such a, a beautiful question. And, and I have so many Passions, you know, they're they're passions that I have professionally. They're they're passions that I have as a mother and 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 a wife. Um, I would say that one of my my greatest passions is to find a way to what my husband and I call democratize the King legacy, which is you know from. Um, the, the earliest of Martin Luther King Jr.'s writings to, to very close to his death, he talked about this idea and this concept of a beloved community. And a lot of times I think people still are not clear on what that is. They think it's just some form of utopia and in that wonderful, but what it is is a place where we are truly all seen and respected um, for our diversity. And it's, it's a place where, where, where justice and peace and love reign. And I think I firmly believe and know that the legacy of Martin Luther King Jr. Coretta Scott King does not only belong in this family, that we are all heirs to that. Um, and that's how we will create um, the beloved community. So um, on the last sermon that Martin Luther King Jr. ever delivered at Ebenezer Baptist Church, he talked about, it was entitled The Drum Major Instinct. And he talked about the concept of everyone kind of wants to be out front leading the band, but he said that what's most important to him is that to be a drum major for peace, a drum major for justice, a drum major for righteousness and love and truth. And um, that particular sermon was so important to Coretta Scott King that after, when he was assassinated two months later, she played that excerpt at his funeral. And so in, 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 in a very real sense, he eulogized himself with that, with that call, with that, with that, with those words. And my passion is that that call I feel is our pursuit to really eliminate the triple evils of racism, poverty and violence and really embrace peace, justice and equity. <laughs> that's that's amazing. And also too, if 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 I could share for others as they're listening to you, you know, there's many people that can speak this, and that's what we speak of as well. Like there was many people that that could have had that dream, but it's that power in that your your belief matching the behavior, that courage, right, that you have to persevere even though there's outside, right? The outside circumstances would show you that this dream, you know, that that we have, as you said, you know. 
it, there's, we don't see it. There's no, there's no possible way in which that we can have it. But what gives us that courage? What allows us to step into our power? Is there anything that you could speak on that? Maybe even with the the divine feminine, you know, the, the little the discussions we had last night. Oh my gosh, I, I'm, I'm a huge, I'm, I'm a huge um, seeker and and admirer and bringer forth of the the con, the divine feminine. You know, in my own personal quest, I realized a few years ago that that divine femininity part of myself um, had been in a lot of ways. I would even maybe say lacking. I think sometimes in in personal development and even in the spiritual world that you know there was a there's a lot of outward appearances of you know what we traditionally think of as more masculine qualities and more masculine ways of achievement, and also but the finding of the divine feminine, which is a face another face of the creator, right? It's not a, a either or of the divine masculine and divine feminine, but for far too long we as a society have kind of silence that voice of the divine feminine, which is more about connection. It is it is loving, yes, and it's extraordinarily fierce. I mean it's and it's and it's more circular in nature and it's about you know connection and transformation and rebirth. And I think that that's a, a, a continual um, calling um, within within my life. But to answer your question too though about you know to have that age old dream, which we all have of something that's, you know, that's larger and greater outside of ourselves and that calling and, and pulling that you, that you just cannot ignore, no matter what it, the forces look like to the, to the 3D, you know, to the physical senses that, that it's always those, those visionaries or those, that part of us with that higher calling that's calling us. And as we're pulling towards that and evolving, we're lifting everyone else up with it, right? Because in reality, you know, we all are one. I, I had the extraordinary benefit um, from a professional level of also working. I worked for an organization for many years um, that monitored the Ku Klux Klan and neo-Nazis and skinheads. And that organization was started by a gentleman named Reverend C.T. Vivian, two people, Reverend C.T. Vivian and Ann Braden, who were my, um, first and foremost on um, mentors. And I would encourage anyone to, to look up Reverend C.T. Vivian. There's a video of him when he was registering people to vote outside of the courthouse in Selma. And what's so extraordinary about the video is that it is the embodiment of nonviolence. It is the embodiment of love and action because in reality, nonviolence really is about love and action. And um, on that clip, that you know is famous of him with he literally was in Selma, Alabama, with um, people behind him, you know, registering to vote and was being blocked um, at the courthouse by the sheriff. And at one point, with the cameras rolling, the sheriff turned around with his club and and knocked him down. And immediately, CT Vivian got up and his nose is bloodied. And you know, but he just talked about the fact of you know that you know that you stand you, you talk about democracy. We're willing to die for democracy, and you can turn your back on us, but you can't turn your back on justice and peace. And um, so, to have been mentored by someone like that, who who touched and changed the world, who had a calling within themselves, and that that seemed impossible, that that seemed outside of reality, and to to know that you can change not only yourself, but the world, you know, when you're, you're, you're doing something that great, it, it has to my core um, informed me of the possibilities of what each one of us can, can and do. Another person, Ann Braden, um, also I worked with her at the same organization and she actually was mentioned in um, a letter from a Birmingham jail as one as a white southerner who um, that Martin's father felt um, had been doing a lot of work um, for all people so to really I count myself extraordinarily blessed and and you know and you know that was just arranged I guess by the stars or whatever before you know my arrival here but to be in that presence and to know on the visceral level what we can do when we tap into that power it, it's something that you cannot ever change my mind about it's it, it, it's it's annoying right no that's such a that's such a beautiful story 
if, if I could also relate it just again in, in a space of observation, which is so beautiful again, is some key words that you said though too, which was that you, you were willing to die for it. Mm -hmm. and, and the changing of the, you know, this outer world really is the changing of our inner world of what we see inside that we cannot see outside of us. Yeah. And, you know, when we are leading that again with love and light, what we co-create co with the higher power, we have to trust that that's exactly what was meant to be for what it is that we're seeking to to create. And so the I wanted to ask you too, what your thought, and this was just kind of what came to mind, the power of unity and the collectiveness of surrounding yourself with with those that, that know this truth, you know, how do you, what, what are your thoughts about that? What comes through with that question for you? I'll answer that. And I also want to add on to what you just said as well, because when you think about the fact that the entire um, civil rights movement or and the, the leadership of Martin Luther King Jr. was really informed by Mahatma Gandhi, right? So you're looking at two, two le leaders who changed the course of the world without firing a gun, you know, without any type of violence. And and Gandhi, um, my husband and I had an opportunity, I should spend 10 years ago now to we've been back to India many times, but to to trace the footsteps of his parents that had been at that point 50 years before. And it and it was, you know, we were tracing the footsteps of Gandhi. So we were, you know, at the place where he actually was assassinated, you know, his and we were where the salt started and so on and so forth. So um, but when you really think about the fact that he Gandhi called it Satyagraha, which is soul force. You translate into soul force. That's something that is intangible, but so very powerful that once we ourselves are emanating that and tapping into that and tapping in with others of that, there is nothing um, that we cannot accomplish um, at all. And, and that leads me as well into your, your question about, I think is extraordinarily important with who you surround yourself with. Because at the end of the day, um, yes, it is a hero's journey, and yes, a lot of a lot of the work has to be done in, internally and alone. But all of us have those moments of of doubt, or those moments of particularly when you're going through the init initiation part. You know, like as you're leaving things behind that have as unhealthy as, as they have been, they've been a, a source of comfort in an unhealthy way, but a source of comfort, you know, to you. So as you are leaving the, those things behind, as you're shedding those things, not only, sometimes you have to shed um, certain people, you still love them, you release them in love and light, but you're, you're shedding all of that and you're being called to something higher and greater. And there are a lot of people that probably may not understand or may not understand to that degree. So to have uh, a level of, very, um, you have to be very careful. So very cultivated inner circle, um, I think is, is extraordinary. When you look at most, I mean, yes, all visionaries are, you know, they have a vision and no matter what, you know, what is said or what is, is done that they're gonna go forward with that. And a lot, and they also have trusted people around them because even though we understand and know the different, um, variables of the ethers, but you know, we are <laughs> um, walking through a physical sense. So to be able to have, to be able to have that companionship um, and that, and also it's also extraordinarily helpful to have someone see and hold for you, your greatest, even when you yourself don't know or feel that. Because again, if we're all one, we're all connected. If someone is holding that vision for you, um, you're going to continue to at, at the moments and the times that you get tired or that you get bewildered or that you get a little bit confused. It's, it's to have that North Star, to have that surrounding of love is extraordinarily important. Wow. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. And I, and I felt that while you were sharing that. Um, thank you so much, Andrea. I also want to ask you just if I could, if, you know, based on our conversation yesterday, you shared with me something so beautiful about the picture behind you. And I wanted to make sure we found the time, if you could, to share with us what what that means or, you know, who that woman is. <laughs> well, um, that is, my, I guess it's this way, <laughs> the camera. That is my extraordinary mother-in-law. Um, 
Coretta Scott King, who was a phenomenal, phenomenal um, force of nature and force of love and force of the divine feminine um, in all of its, its variations. So, you know, this is one of my favorite places in the house. And I think all of our favorite places and it's, it's, it's um, extraordinary important for me to have her um, on my shoulder um, looking over me. That's beautiful. And then also too, I had asked you, and it was uh, what your favorite quote was. And I'd never heard this quote because I looked up many and on my page, I share a lot of quotes, of course, because they're so powerful. Mm -hmm. uh, that energy that, that comes out from behind those words, it's as if they're speaking right into your soul. But then you found, if you could share that with, with all of us, that'd be wonderful. And the, the reason that I love reading it so much is that I have it on a, a, a photo on my um, phone and it's actually handwritten. This is a quote by Martin Luther King Jr. and I have, and it's actually written in his handwriting. So even as I'm saying it a lot, I love to, to look to look down on, to look down because I feel like I'm getting even more energy looking at his handwriting as I say it. But um, I'm an avid reader, an avid learner and student as I'm sure a lot of people in this circle and on this quest is, but this is my absolute favorite. So. Um, it's almost like choosing a favorite child, but this one stands above anything. And, and it goes that love is the greatest force in the universe. It is the heartbeat of the moral cosmos. He who loves is a participant in the being of God. And that is a quote by Martin Luther King Jr. I'm sure everyone felt that for sure, to lead with love, the inner work that we do. And that to lead with love, and there are so many, we, we have so many different passions and, and, and purpose, you know, and I think that that is, of course, by the divine. I mean, why, you, you go into a field of flowers, if all the flowers were the same and the same color, I mean, it'd be beautiful, but kind of boring. You know, the fact that the, the, dy the dynamic um, vibration of this universe comes alive with all of our, with the diversity of our passions and our talents. So, but at the very core of all of that is the force of love. And when we're emanating that, and when we are being that, in his words, we are being a participant of God. Oh, that's so powerful. It's so powerful, which again is why the inner work that we do that, that we're all on this healing journey so that we can allow more of that truth to flow to and through us, to allow us to be more courageous and braver to step out into things we haven't ever done before. And many people know this is a free fall for me, as I've shared before, being here with you. And, you know, I'm stepping into the unknown as well. But, and through the transparency of our story, the authenticity, the truth, and I know that, you know, our audience will get to know more of, of who you are and your journey. And again, you know, because, one of the important things I want people to connect here to is this mission that you're on that we're all collectively, that we're all doing together, especially if you're on this call, right? That's really what we're, it, for me, that, that language is that new word, but how in which that I even connected with you. I had to do the work the last four years because you do know a little bit about my story and how this is a dream to be here where I am right now. And this is to validate for others that are stuck in certain places in their life where no, there's nothing outside of them that shows them what's possible. But again, with love and hearing this truth from those that know it, that have left a legacy here, you know, and, and you of course will leave that as well. This is how this is all done. And it almost sounds, I remember as a kid, people would say, oh my God, like my, I would get on people's nerves. You know, it's like everything can't be unicorn and rainbow. So eventually I dimmed my light, you know, so that, so that, I wouldn't bother others, you know, and now it's like, I can't hold a lot of that in. I'm learning how to be in more harmony, learning the divine and masculine energy, that inner healing. Again, as we, as we work on ourselves, we're able to be in tune. And that's how I was able to find you. You were able to find me based on a universal language that you and I recognized the trust that you and I felt for each other. The moment that we, there was very few words that were shared mm -hmm. and it was such a, it was a soul connection. And we both knew that this, and that's when I realized this is what this is. This journey is about this inner healing. This, this is how you do it. You you reprogram the part of you that isn't you, the part of you that's lied to you, that's told you what isn't true, so that you can embody this truth. And then with this truth, you can lead out like 
you, Andrea King, that these people, you know, that um, that they might feel ordinary, but we're all extraordinary. You know, we just we can, every one of us, each and every one of us are a dream, a realization of the dream of the divine, each and every one of us. There is no exception to that. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it feels like. There is no exception to that. We are each one of us a realization of the, the dream of the divine. Each one of us are walking with divinity. We all are divinity. We all are the, we are the heroes and the heroines of our, of, of our lives and our, and our story. You know, we all are, we, and at any given moment, our energy is our offering back to the divine. You know, that's our offering back. And the divine doesn't change is that, you know, kind of we go, you know, in and out of, of dances, you know, with that. Um, but in, in the, in the, in the cosmos, there is no hierarchy. You know, there is no, you know, if this just if because this person is more recognized or this, there is there's none of that. That's all. That's all man-made. We've all put that on ourselves. You know, and we 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 all have to understand and know that that we each have an extraordinary destiny. We each have an extraordinary divine calling, and we have a extraordinary purpose. And we can, and, and also back to your, um, um, one of your earlier questions, I know sometimes we go in a circle. Um, one of the things that I, I tell my daughter on a, on, a, on a continual basis is that, cause you know, like there's all of this conversation now too about queens and queen and queen, and that's, that's great you know, in a sense. But what I always tell her is that real queens straighten each other's crowns. That's what we're here to do. We are here and kings, gentlemen out there, but certainly as a, a real queen is one that helps to, we, if you're a real queen, you straighten um, each other's crowns. Wow. <laughs> uh, yes, that was, that was very powerful. Wow. Just, uh, I'm actually processing that and allowing that to, you know, to embody that. There's a part of me that wants to rush that. And I feel that that's the paradigm that we teach too, where, but I'm just allowing that to sink in. That's really powerful. We fix each other's crowns. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. You know, again, Andrea, I, I really can't thank you enough. And I want to ask you again, you know, well, actually before, let me let me rephrase it this way. If there's anything that you could share with, with what I like to say is the students of the universe, because this universal truth can be spoken anywhere. And those that know it can feel it with their hearts, which is how I how I was able to find you in the way that I did and the speed that I was able to do it as well. And that's something I want others to feel too. But if there's anything that you feel called to share with them, you could share that. Um, I think one of, one of my greatest desires is to not idolize Martin Luther King Jr. and Coretta Scott King. You know, an idol is something that you, you know, you take off of like a, an ornament, you take off the shelf and you dust it and you, know, you put it back on the shelf. But I, our greatest calling is to live up to those ideals, the ideals of peace, justice and equity. And when I'm talking about justice, it, justice is merely love in the public arena. You know, justice, this work is not about collective guilt. It's about collective responsibility how we're responsible for ourselves and we're responsible for others. And so I, I think that as you, as each one of us continue on our path and um, I would imagine, you know, I, people ask often or certainly they ask um, my husband, like, what would your father say or do? And, you know, at, you know, none of us really know, but we do know we have his, his, his works and that guides us. But I would imagine that, our greatest calling is to live up to those ideals, not, not to idolize them, but to live up to those ideals, to live up to those principles, to, to, to be and embody um, our very best self of, of love and action. Wow. That's beautiful. Thank you. Wow. That's, 
<laughs> that is so beautiful. Like I said, I don't feel that this will be your last appearance here because I know that many people probably have tons of questions to ask. I actually, I can't see the comments, which is probably a good thing. Uh, we're here. <laughs> um, all day, but Andrea, again, thank you so much for your time. I want everyone here to see though too, that you're also on a new journey in your life, a new chapter. And you know, I, I want people to see, you know, in the next six months to a year, where will you be, you know, compared to where you were here on this live call with all of us today. And um, yeah, being a student of the universe, a leader of the universe and, and speaking this truth and guiding everyone into love and light you know, I just, I can't thank you enough. What a blessing it is for us to have you, you know, again, Andrea, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's such a bless, blessing and an honor and a pleasure to, to be with all of you. So thank you. Oh, we will see you soon. All right, guys. Well, thank you again for being here. Again, if you have any questions, please be sure that you ask in the comments and I'll make sure that um, we get Andrea back to answer those for us. All right. Have a great day.